Michael Weiss now, investigative journalist who focuses on Russia. He's covered the wars in Iraq and Syria, and he's the news director at the global affairs magazine Newsline. Michael, you follow this so closely in touch with European intelligence and military experts. What, what's your sense, Michael, of how long Putin can keep this up? I mean, it depends on who you talk to, Shep, uh, but European intelligence, particularly the Baltic states, the Estonians, don't think that he's got more of a fight in him than about two months in oh. terms of manpower, supply lines, that kind of thing. I mean, we have seen such attrition on the Russian side. Uh, you mentioned 7,000 killed in action. That's a conservative estimate. The Estonians actually had between seven and 9,000 several days ago, and when they told me that, that already was out of date. Uh, in addition to which, the Ukrainians say they use this figure, personnel losses, uh, and right now it's about 13,500 to 14,000. But what the Ukrainians are doing are conflating fatalities with casualties. This is important to understand. Casualties encompass not only those killed in action, but those wounded in action, those who have deserted, and POWs. And the desertion rate here is something to really pay attention to. Mm. Uh, open source intelligence websites that have been tracking this stuff closely, geolocating where the Russians are simply walking off, as you mentioned, into the woods, abandoning in pristine condition, multi-million dollar weapon systems, tanks, anti-aircraft systems, so on. Uh, just do the math. The number of crew, for instance, that would fit into a T-90 tank or the number of crew that would be driving a Pantsir air, air defense system, if they've just left this stuff by the side of the road, where did they go? They ran into the woods. They're, they're occupying Ukrainian civilian homes. But they're basically combat ineffective. They're, they're taken off the chessboard here. So the Ukrainians are counting those figures as well. And indeed, I mean, we could be looking at tens of thousands of Russians who simply are not fighting because they're dead or they're injured wow. or they've just run away. Uh, and that's we're only into week four now. Incredible. Michael, could some of Putin's generals have duped him? I mean, on how ready they were, how much equipment they actually had? So there's, there's a dispute here about what's actually taking place. I can tell you that, that Putin has already begun to cannibalize his own regime uh, in a very Stalinist manner. There are purges taking place, house arrests of, of major FSB generals, including the, the head of the so-called Fifth Service, which is the foreign intelligence arm of the FSB, the domestic security apparatus, which, believe it or not, has a foreign intelligence arm. Um, this guy is now apparently under house arrest. There have been reports that up to eight generals in the army are also under house arrest. I saw today the head of Russia's National Guard has been placed under house arrest. So the question is, why is this happening? Is it because they sold Putin a bill of goods? They told him they were going to have a cakewalk and that Ukrainians were going to greet the Russians with open arms and chocolates and flowers? Oh. Or is it because he is interpreting in his paranoid KGB mind Remember, this is going back to sort of Cold War mentality. He's interpreting failure as betrayal. Why are my generals not succeeding? Is it because they're working for the West? Have they defected in place? Are they, are they moles? I mean, remember, how did the United States know, almost down to the date, yeah. that Putin was going to invade Ukraine? Uh, it's because he's probably, his entire regime is perforated with, with leakers and moles. Mm. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.